All right. I'm sorry about that, Anthony. Well, we've been having a nice conversation here. I've been uh, I've been tap dancing as much as I could with uh, with the people that we've got on the call. All right. Well, we do have a lot of people on. We have 21. Those are those are your folks there. So I appreciate it. Let's get right into things. I I do apologize. Uh, we have Anthony Hit here. Um, Anthony is a, a, a great. A great guy, Anthony. I really appreciate you you taking time when uh, you and I see each other at some of these conferences, i.e., uh, Luxury Connect or some of the other Inman events. You always uh, take the time to to say hello and, and converse. So I do appreciate you for that and just what you're doing for the industry. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, and thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. So um, you know, obviously, here we are, uh, Mar uh, May twenty second, and. Uh, the world's, uh, you know, slowed down a whole lot. And um, the, we launched this Luxury Lunch and Learn on uh, April 10th. This is uh, the 19th episode. And uh, with the idea, we want to bring tools and resources for agents so that agents can be, uh, uh, have their finger on the pulse in multiple markets, right? Because we're talking New York and I'm based in Chicago and, and shelter in place is different in other, uh, other parts of the uh, the country and the world for that matter. So, uh, you know, one of the things that we're really trying to do with these luxury lunch and learns is just get different perspectives. And, um, and so we're really excited to have you. So let's just jump right into things. Um, tell everybody a little bit about you and, 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 and uh, you're the CEO of Angle and Vol Volkers and tell us a little bit about your company, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. I, uh, for, for those who are on before Michael got back and before we probably started the live stream on Facebook, I'll just repeat. Uh, again, my name is Anthony Hitt. I am the CEO of Engel & Folkers here in the Americas. Uh, Engel & Folkers is a luxury brand founded in Hamburg, Germany in 1977. So we've been around a, a little while. Uh, unlike most of the real estate brands we know here in the Americas, uh, we are a brand that started in Europe. We developed and established ourselves in Europe before entering the U.S. market and then ultimately the Americas markets about, uh, about 10 years ago. We're probably most known for our uh, uh, first-class real estate advisors. We call them advisors versus agents, uh, providing a very bespoke and high level of service to our clientele. And therefore, we represent a lot of uh, very, uh, the, the uber wealthy, but also people who just want a different type of luxury experience. Uh, we're also known, of course, for our iconic real estate shops uh, that look uh, virtually alike all throughout the world. As I mentioned, about two, over, over 200 now in the United States or the Americas, and about 900 around the, uh, the world. And every place from uh, uh, in, in New York City here on Park Avenue, unfortunately closed right now, Beverly Hills, San Francisco, Miami, uh, all the way into Vancouver and Montreal. And then we go to Europe and France and Paris and the Côte d'Azur and Barcelona and on and on and on. So that's, uh, that's a little bit about who we are right now. Well, a, a couple of things I want to circle back with. Uh, so advisors, uh, I, I love that, right? So uh, consultant advisors, versus salespeople, you know, or, or agents. So uh, just a little tweak in languaging, but it's also about mindset and that experience, which is the second thing I want to talk to you, to you about. So uh, your, your, your agents, you call advisors, which is a, a distinct difference. And uh, you talk a little bit about experience um, and you have over 200, uh, about 200 offices in the States and 900 across the country. And, and that was a, a point I didn't know is that each of the offices have a similar look and feel. Yeah, if you if you if you uh, look at our brand online, as a matter of fact, it's one of the things that I think really sets us out uh, from a lot of uh, the competitors. Is yes, we have had these. We, we don't even call them offices. Uh, Mr. Bokers has always said uh, people don't office for a home; they shop for a home. And uh, and with that in mind, we are known for having uh, you know, retail locations and prime locations uh, throughout the world. Uh, they do have a very similar aesthetic. Uh, very much like a, an Apple store or a, another uh, you know, internationally known brand. Uh, so they are uh, identifiable. Uh, one thing we've always said is we are not another just insert logo here brand. When it comes to the word advisor, you're right. It is a mindset. It's, it's an attitude, uh, but it's also a way of doing business. Um, there's, there's no question. And I think we see this uh, in the U.S. Uh, as much as other parts of the world. Uh, it, in a lot of parts of the world, you can just say I'm an agent and you're an agent that day. You don't have to be licensed. You don't have to, to do any training. You can just say I'm, I'm, I'm selling houses now. In, 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 the, in the Americas, here in the U.S., of course, uh, we have to have a real estate license. But just because you have to have a license doesn't mean that you are qualified to actually take care of clients. 
Uh, so we don't want to just be agents. So obviously a license is important. Uh, being a realtor with the National Association of Realtors and following through on the, uh, the, uh, the code of ethics is important, but we want to take it to a, a higher level when it comes to taking care of our clients and actually be like a financial advisor, a real estate advisor, someone who actually advises a client, uh, not only on this particular transaction they may be interested in now, but on other transactions as their, as their, as their, their life progresses. Yeah, that, that's a, uh, thanks for clarifying that. That's a great point because especially we're talking about high net worth individuals, you know, this is a luxury lunch and learn, right? So all clientele, no, no matter if they're entry level, average price, high end or luxury, but it's, it, you're advising them, right? A salesperson wants to deal, an advisor, a consultant talks about the, the pros and the cons and, and gives the client options so they can make a sound decision. Yeah, you're looking at creating a lifetime. We, we talk about clients for life. That's been a term in this industry for a long time. But uh, when, you're, when you're working, especially with more discerning individuals, people who do have some savvy, who do have some time, uh, do have some wealth, uh, 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 perhaps, uh, you know, there is a higher expectation. And if you don't deliver on that higher expectation, you're probably not going to keep that client. You may do a deal. Don't be wrong. I know that happens in this yeah. industry. But you're probably not going to have that client that not only does this uh, transaction, but does future transactions. And, and part of the fact that we do have this consistent global uh, attitude uh, and, and branding uh, is very important, especially for that clientele that is uh, uh, obviously transient, but has homes that may be in multiple locations. And, uh, and they want to know that they're dealing with someone at this particular brand who works very similarly to this a person in a different part of the world. And that's why our network being so collaborative is so important. I mean, a lot of companies have you know, dots on the map, but in most cases, a lot of those dots are not truly connected. They all have the same logo on the front door, but that's usually, or a lot of cases where, where it stops with us, we are absolutely connected globally in a way that we can move things around and talk to each other and, uh, and share ideas and, and share uh, best practices when it comes to taking care of an individual client. Well, you guys just launched in Chicago uh, about a year ago. Jennifer Ames uh, had actually on our podcast. She's doing a great job, and she she Perfect. did a great job um, on the. Um, she was on a panel at Luxury Connect uh, in the fall and in, in October, and uh, she did such a great job talking about state and local tax salt that we had her on our podcast. Um, so you guys are. Uh, in, in my in my market center, if you will, in my market, I should say, and uh, she's she's excellent. And and I got to tell you, when I go to these conferences, I've never seen a brand, uh, a brokerage, travel like you guys do. And and you guys do a good job of maybe stacking some of your meetings around these big conferences, so that uh, a they can you can network with other top associates across the country, learn at these conferences, but also, you know, kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, and, and uh, encourage your agents to travel and attend at these events. Well, again, if you're going to work, and I know this is about luxury, if you're going to work in the luxury space, if you're going to work with more, more discerning individuals, and whether that be at a high price point or a, a, a more accessible price point, um, the fact of the matter is they want expertise. Uh, clients want expertise. And uh, part of the way you get that is by continuing to learn. I mean, a lot of us have had been forced into a continue to learn a situation more recently with COVID. But if you're not continuing to learn, if you're not networking, you're not going to really be able to bring the level of, uh, of service to your clients that they're going to, to expect. Uh, we, we do occasionally, I think it's, you know, if you ask the chicken and the egg scenario, the reality is our team does travel. They're out there and about. Our agents, uh, advisors are out there and about. And when they're out there and about, they genuinely like each other. They want to collaborate. They want to compare notes. And so a lot of times I think they'll put together other meetings or social uh, gatherings so they can continue to interact with each other and share ideas. And, and, uh, and actually just you know, a, lot of, a lot of groups call themselves families, but I think we do really act like a family in a way that we, we genuinely care about each other, about each other's success, and about the success of, of our clientele. You know, you bring up a good point. Uh, you know, I found in, in real estate, Anthony, many agents, many brokerages uh, sometimes have a scarcity mindset, right? They want to keep their, their secrets close to their chest. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad you, you brought that up because uh, that is unfortunate, right? But that, that does occur. So uh, agents that tend to go to these big conferences, right? They're, they more or less have more of an abundance mindset uh, versus a scarcity mindset. 
Well, again, when you have a level of success, it's a lot easier to, to have that abundance attitude. And I think that's one something that helps. Um, yeah. We also, because we're not, you know, we're not the largest brand uh, and there's no dream or desire for us to ever be the largest brand, which means if you're, a, if you're an advisor with Engel and Folkers, there's a good chance that you are the person who focuses on your area of specialization. And more than likely, you're not competing with another Engel and Folkers advisor in that area of specialization. And when you're not competing with someone, it's much easier to share uh, ideas and collaborate and be successful. I mean, and that's, that's part of our DNA and who we are. Um, and, and, and as a brand, we've been very fortunate to attract, like Jennifer Ames, who you're speaking about in, in the Chicago market, uh, but the Jennifer Ames equivalents in, in the markets that we're in. Uh, and so again, you do have an abundance of, uh, or an attitude of abundance. You do have this desire to collaborate. You know that it's reciprocal, uh, that if I share my ideas with you, you and I've had these conversations, uh, mm -hmm. that you share your ideas with me and hopefully we're both better for it. And, and that's the way it should work. Uh, and so we are a little idealistic, but our idealistic way of doing business seems to be working pretty well for us. Yeah, no, I've been very impressed. You guys have a, a, a great magazine as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I love the, the visuals when you're representing properties, just on you know, bedrooms, baths, and some of the amenities. You guys do a really good job of uh, having strong visuals to show uh, what, what's coming, you know, what uh, some of the features of, of each of the properties you represent. So I've always been very impressed with that. We definitely have a very sleek, uh, I would say, European uh, uh, design sensibility. Uh, it's 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 both traditional and uh, and has uh, longevity, um, but at the same time progressive. And that's uh, that's a special brand when you can have both of those because we we are a more approachable luxury brand. Uh, we want to be a more hip, cool, uh, approachable luxury uh, brand. And, uh, and again, I think that design aesthetic is part of what goes about it. I mean, we would uh, argue in a lot of ways that we are a design company. And, and if you, uh, you have, you meet a lot of our advisors, they also have a very definite sense of style, mm -hmm. uh, as do our clients. And again, that's part of the reason I think it, it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your backdrop there is, uh, you talk about design and style. That's, that's, uh, that's beautiful there. Oh, well, this is my, uh, you're welcome to my living room. This is your, my, my, uh, my home in Manhattan. My, my, I say home, it sounds like it's big. No, I, I my, uh, my Manhattan apartment is about a block and a half from our Park Avenue shop and our headquarters uh, for the Americas. And so that's where I'm, I'm holed up here. And I'm, uh, I have a pretty small space. So I'm actually sitting at the dining room table. That's where okay. you, just, this, the dining room table has been officially deemed my, uh, my office. Okay. So this is okay. where I've been working now for the last two months. Yeah, we're all we're all adapting, and and talk to me a little bit about what's COVID nineteen and shelter in place, and and you know husband wives or husband husbands that have to work from the same, um, you know, under the same roof where perhaps they commuted before, you know, in your um, in your expertise, do you find that during this time people are realizing, man, I need a second home office, or I really you know wish we had this, and and so in some ways. You know, people are going to reprioritize, um, you know, what they want in a home. I think anytime there's a shift in the way we, the, the way we live, people are going to rethink uh, the way they're, they're operating. Uh, for me, I know that this, uh, this will pass and the, the likelihood of me continuing uh, to work out of my home on, a, on, on this uh, level of intensity uh, will reduce. So the idea that I would need a home office a uh, second room is, is not something for me. But as I've talked to uh, our advisors and our clients and, and, and friends uh, around, the, around the globe, some of them you know, cannot wait to get back out into the world and get away from the, you know, the, 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 the person that they love or their children or whatever the case it is. Others have said they've reawakened uh, their relationships and, uh, and they, can't, you know, they, they hope that it can stay this way for a lot longer. And I think that's how all of our clients are. You know, we're not all alike in any way. So it's, it's nice that there's differences. I do think though, and this is something I, I've spoken about with our group, and, and we've done a lot of uh, networking um, uh, via this type of, uh, of, uh, of chat and, and, and video meetings. Um, uh, I do think that I, I hear people say, I, I can't wait for things to get back to normal. And, uh, and the reality is the normal that we had before this is, is, is gone. That normal is not going to exist. In the same way that we have learned new things about ourselves and what we're capable of, uh, in the same way we have used new technologies um, to, uh, to communicate and to do meetings, our clients have done the same thing. And, and with that being said, they're not going to want to completely lose all of these things either. And so we are going to definitely see a paradigm shift. 
And I think it's important for all of us uh, as leaders to make sure that we're prepared for that paradigm shift and that we're leading in that shift as opposed to being the laggards. Uh, a lot of times our industry is known for not wanting to be too progressive or move too fast. Uh, well, this has forced a lot of us to, to wake up and, and be ready to move. And I do think even though we've, it's been threatened for a long, long time, Michael, at least as long as you and I have known each other, that things are going to change. Things have changed. They're not going to change. They have changed. Yeah. And uh, it's important that you, uh, you, you bring yourself up to speed as quickly as possible and that you do look a little bit into whatever crystal ball you think you have to determine how you're going to take advantage of this, uh, this paradigm shift. Yeah, you, you bring up a good point. I, I, I definitely would agree with you. Just like 9-11 changed a lot of things, the way people travel and, and security and so forth, I, I would completely agree with you. Um, talk to me a little bit about um, any words of advice for agents or, or, or teams looking to break into luxury. You know, if you were to you know, have a crystal ball or and look back or just based on your experience, because I know you, you had some experience at Sotheby's and of course, you're at uh, where, you know, your position now, which uh, t talk to me a little bit about, uh, you know, one or two things that you would have for any agents looking to perhaps break into luxury. Um, uh, as you're right, I, I was before becoming the, the CEO here, uh, before joining uh, this uh, brand, I did work with Sotheby's International Realty. I was uh, a real estate agent uh, for, uh, for nine years, sold a lot of properties. Uh, at that time, I was based in Santa Monica, California. So I worked the Los Angeles, the west side there uh, near the coast. Um, I, I think that a couple of things is, first of all, you have to make that decision that this is what you want to do. Uh, but but in, in many aspects, dealing with a luxury client is, is the way you should be dealing with any client. Uh, but a few things that I would, uh, I would start with is that your branding is important. Um, if you have a more um, uh, campy, <laughs> I'm trying to have a better choice of words, uh, a, a look or, or elementary look, it's probably not going to play for you. Uh, I would align yourself with a, with a luxury brand. Uh, a luxury also is global. Uh, so align yourself with a, with a global brand. Um, I would also, uh, I'm a big believer in specialization. Uh, when it comes to, if you look at even a lot of the statistics that the National Association of Realty uh, gives us here in the United States, uh, the one of the things they're gonna tell you is your clients want you to be a specialist. Uh, the idea of being a generalist, that you're gonna chase a deal and a client all over, uh, you know, that is not what the type of uh, the type of clients that I think you're trying to attract in the luxury field are looking for. They want to know that no one knows whatever it is they're interested in more than you. So whether that is a, a group of people, CEOs, uh, or sports celebrities, uh, or what's my favorite, a geographic area. You know, we used to use the term farm, but mm -hmm. a geographic area, you should know everything uh, about that. Um, uh, from there, I think it's about the connections because you know, those who are in this field are connected. And so it's not only being connected to the right clients, it's being connected to the people who can refer you those clients. You know, I dealt a lot with, uh, with entertainment and uh, sports when I was in Santa Monica. So of course I aligned with the sports agencies and the, uh, and the talent firms. Um, I also dealt with, uh, uh, you know, basically anyone that would be dealing with my clients. So that would mean uh, align yourself with the interior designers or the, uh, the, the luxury car dealers, or whatever that may be. That's a good place to start. Um, and then get to know the other top agents in the, uh, not only in your market, so you can share ideas, but in other mar markets. And, and the way I would do that is find out where people are coming from in your particular market. I mean, if you're in Los Angeles, you need to have a good connection in New York. If you're in New York, you need to have a good connection in Miami. If you're in any of those places, you need to have good European connection uh, because those connections are going to help educate you on who you should be and give you the insight you need. But they're also people who are going to refer business to you. And they're also the people you're going to refer business to. So I think that network is extremely important. Uh, I mean, that's in all frankness, that's why Angle and Volkers is set up the way it's set up. Uh, even our expansion is based on what are the feeder markets to every other market. Uh, all of our events are designed to connect you with the people that you need to be connected with so you can have that education, so you can have that specialization, so you can share best practices and ultimately even refer those clients. Uh, that's, that, that, uh, thank you for that answer. Very thorough and I appreciate that. And your, and your uh, expertise, you know, when things go back to, you know, kind of normal, if you will, the new normal. The new uh, normal. The new normal. Um, those agents um, that will be successful, those teams, those offices that will be successful will have fill in the blank blank in common, in your opinion. 
I don't, I don't understand the question. Yeah, Sorry. so, um, so the, let me rephrase that um, or repeat that. So real estate agents, uh, teams, brokerages, those that will be successful um, with the new normal uh, when their markets open up, i.e. New York or some of these other areas, those agents that are going to be successful are those that have in common, uh, fill in the blank. A, a flexible, uh, they're, they're, they're flexible and they adapt. Uh, again, I think anyone who, who plants themselves and says, I want it to be the way it was, uh, are the ones that are probably going to start fading away. Now, the reality is if you're in the luxury space, you don't fade that fast because you build relationships with clients and they're going to stick with you through thick and thin. Uh, but if you're looking at uh, attracting business and building these relationships, you're going to have to adapt. The way you used to do a showing uh, you know, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago is going to change. The way you're going to communicate with your clients is going to change. Uh, I think we're finally going to see some of the changes in this industry, uh, for instance, maybe around uh, you know, closing a transaction uh, shift because a lot of transactions couldn't close because the technology was antiquated. So yeah, I, I would say that they're the, the ones who are going to be successful are the ones that are flexible, uh, who are open-minded and who adapt. Uh, very good, adapt, um, that's, a, that's a great. Um, so here we are, I've, I've talked to, uh, we had earlier on this week, uh, David Childers from Keeping Current Matters. They provide good sure. visuals, good data. Um, when do you think- I'm a subscriber, big fan. All right, yeah, I know. Don't they, they provide really great visuals and uh, good data. So, you know, a lot of the five uh, financial institutions are talking about third and fourth quarter is when they see, uh, I wouldn't say things go back to the pre-COVID, COVID, but definitely things on the rise. Um, you know, what are you guys, what are your uh, financial um, insiders within your company suggesting as far as the markets? Again, you guys are in 200, uh, you have 200 offices here in the States. Uh, what, what's the general sense? What, third quarter, fourth quarter, 2021? Um, I think I'm going to prove a mirror what I'm hearing from a lot of the other leadership. The, the reality is I think in the U.S. it's not going to be as bad uh, and again, real estate's like the weather. Uh, even though we may have an average temperature of 67 degrees, that's not the Phoenix experience or the Miami experience or the Minnesota experience. But if we, if we were to really look at it generally, I, I think ultimately this year is not going to be nearly as bad as some of us suspected. Uh, again, because of so many uh, professionals in this industry uh, who adapted very quickly and kept things going and were able to force uh, their local uh, uh, government agencies in a lot of cases uh, to, to keep things moving from an essential standpoint. Uh, I think the, uh, the second quarter will probably be uh, not as bad as a lot of us thought because we had great momentum going into it from the, the, the spring season. I think the third quarter is going to be the one where we're going to feel most of that because, of course, a lot of the activities, we know in this business, the activities I do now is what generates my business 45, 60, 90 days from now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're just now at that point where we weren't doing a lot of activities in a lot of cases for the last, let's say, 60 to 90 days. So I think that next 60 to 90 days is where we're probably going to see the most. But, uh, but like everyone else or virtually everyone else, I do believe there's a lot of pent-up demand. You know, the, the, the thing about real estate is people always need to move. Uh, they're always wanting to move up or down. Uh, and in some cases, COVID may be the reason for that. And uh, I think we're going to have probably an incredibly strong fourth quarter. So I think our first quarter was, was a record-breaking quarter for us, and I know for a lot of uh, people, I think the fourth quarter actually has the opportunity to do that. And by the end of the year, we've upgraded our uh, estimates too that will probably only be off only uh, you know, 15 to 20% of, uh, of last year. Okay. Uh, and okay. we're going to feel that the most in the third quarter. And, and can, I, can, I, can I add a little to that, Michael? Yes, please. Because, because I think this is something really important. Uh, what I've seen from, the, from, from our advisors and, and leadership at our brand and frankly, from our entire industry, is so many people when this started were able to, to really become true heroes, true leaders in their communities. And, uh, and they rolled up their sleeves and they went out and they helped their neighbors and they helped their communities and they helped their clients and they did all the things and they stayed positive and they reached out to find uh, workshops like you provide and like we've done for our network and others have done for their networks. And, uh, and they read and they did all these things to get better. But, but now what's happened is that energy was great and it got us through maybe that first 30, 60, 90 days. But right now is when we're going to start feeling the impact of maybe not having the revenue that we thought we would have for the next 90 days. And it's going to be very easy, I think, for some of us to slip into a, whether it's an actual depression or at least a, 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 at least a slump, is going to be so, so easy for us right now. So it's really important, I think, 
that you reach deep and, and, uh, and, and find whatever it is you can, you have left and do whatever you can to magnify that. So you can get that activity level back up where you need it. So you can actually take advantage of that pent up demand that's going to be there in, you know, 90 days or in the, in the fourth quarter. Uh, that, that was, that was great. That was like a new rock. Rockney uh, motivational talk. There. I appreciate that. No, but but that, you bring up a really good point, Anthony. Right. So people are, you know, the, you, you know, unified early on. You're seeing all these positive messages, and to use a football analogy, you know, you, you know, the blocking and the tackling and the fundamentals. It's not always fun, but it's the grit. It's the things that you know pay dividends. Like you said, 30, 60, 90 days down the road. So um, again, we talk a lot about mindset, right? Surrounding yourself in the right environment what are you listening to what are you reading you know i say garbage in garbage stays a lot of people say yeah. garbage out but but you're right really, yeah. Um, yeah so good, good good points there so thank you for adding that and i think it's important because it is so easy to get caught in our own minds and like you said that that garbage stays and if we let all of that start creeping in now uh and you hear these well what about the idea this is all going to resurge in the fall i, I don't know no one knows. We can we can all hope that we do the best, and other people do yeah. the best. But ultimately, I can't predict. I, I can't. I can't know what's going to happen. Yeah. All I can know is that if I do the right things now and keep doing the right things, it will be better for me than it will be if I don't do the right things now. Yeah. And I and I think that's really important that we all focus that way and try to keep our minds uh, active and moving towards the, the the goal line of having the best possible year we can, and then probably moving into an incredible twenty twenty one. Mm -hmm. uh, gr great point you know so you know you can't the, the what ifs is what drive people nuts I have agents all the time that you know they, they tell me that their limiting beliefs are you know what if they ask me this on an appointment what if what if what if I was doing a training in uh, Dallas a couple months back Anthony and I had an agent say well there's already four luxury agents in the markets that I want to break into and my answer is that's it, you know, and, and she could have said 23 agents. And I would say that's it. I mean, don't, you know, you got to believe that um, in yourself and you have to continue to grow your knowledge. And, and when you do that, your, your confidence will grow. And when you're more confident, you're more likely to step out of your comfort zone. So that's, and I, and I would argue the reason there are four or 23 or whatever that number is, right. is because there was a need for the four or the 23 to exist. And there was a day that there was three and that there was 22. So, so, so jump in there and then be whatever it is that they're not delivering uh, in a way that maybe you can start reducing that number again on the other side. Yeah, gr great point. Why not you, right? Why not you? Why not you? Um, so I, I got to bring up your, um, your, your the, the car that you're salvaging, uh, the truck, the pickup <laughs> truck, um, because obviously in New York, where are you parking this? Or is this back at another property? Okay, yeah. I, I, first of all, I grew up in Missouri. Uh, that's where my roots are in central Missouri. My, my, my family's still there. But uh, yes, I, um, uh, I have a 1964 GMC pickup truck that my father bought uh, about uh, in, in 1976, I think. Okay. And uh, the, the truck is a 1964 model, I like to say, and so am I. Uh, <laughs> and, and so with that, uh, both of us needed a little work. So uh, I am in the process of restoring it. Started about a little over a year ago. Just celebrated a one-year anniversary. I'm not sure if "celebrated" is the right word. It's a oh, it's quite beautiful. a. Quite I a, celebrate a, that. Yeah, a labor of love. But with that, the uh, the I, the intent is when it's all done uh, that I will either leave it there on on uh, the farm in Missouri, or more than likely, I'm very fortunate. I have a home in in Maui, and uh, and it may become my my beach uh, my beach truck. It will not yeah. come to Manhattan. I do not own a car. Uh, in Manhattan, I walk everywhere I can walk, or take the public transportation, or, okay. or uh, you know, an Uber or Lyft. To sure, the sure. Yeah, no, that, that was. Plus, I, really plus I'm going to have so much into this by the time it's done. Uh, but, you know, blood, sweat, tears, and, and and a lot of money. Unfortunately, yeah. I don't want it in New York City where it's going to get. You know, that first ding is going to kill me no matter oh, where it happens. Yeah. But I don't want it to happen here. Yeah, I don't blame him. But uh, that was that was really cool to see. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a huge car guy, but I appreciate cars. I'm not either. I've got a lot of, this one's a, a labor of love. There's a lot of emotions attached to this. Like I said, my father passed away in 2016. Uh, this is something he and I talked about. Uh, again, that truck's been around our, our family for so long. I took, I, I took, a, took it to homecoming. I think I got my first, uh, first and second traffic ticket in it. So there's a lot of history from, uh, from not only myself, but my entire family around it. So Okay. It means a lot. Uh, I'll, I'll give you one little thing that I'm so excited about. The, the, yeah, farm, uh, the farm in central Missouri was actually homesteaded by my family. So it's, it's been many, many generations. First uh, 
owners, if you will, of, of the property. And we have a barn that still stands, barely. We've all thought it's going to fall for the last 25 years, but it's still there. And uh, I actually took some of the barn wood off of that and had that refinished to make the bed of the truck. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to have a lot of my memories all crammed into it in one place. So I'm very excited about it. It should be. And I saw that picture and, and it's like artwork. I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful that is a truck. Yeah, really. I, really. I, I wish I, I was the guy who uh, was uh, talented enough to do all of this myself. That would even be more. But uh, no, I've got a, a great team in St. Louis, Missouri, who's, who's been doing this. And uh, they hear my crazy ideas and, and you know, oh my gosh. And this was one of the craziest ones. They tried to talk me out of it, but I was adamant that no, this is going to happen. So uh, uh, Sean, um, uh, my husband actually, is the one that had the idea. And the second he said it, I think he might've even regretted it too, because again, not inexpensive, but as soon as he said it, like, yes, we, we've got to do that. Uh, that's great. No, that, that's uh, off topic, but I, I, I was really impressed with that. And uh, that, was, that was pretty cool. Um, and, um, you know, digitally, how do you think moving forward? Last question. And then, um, well, first off, last question, but I, I do know if anybody wants to ask Anthony a question, go ahead and uh, type in the chat box. Uh, we have, you know, a lot of people on, on the Zoom here. And at the end, uh, we'll, you know, ask you for, you know, if people have more questions or if they want more information about Angle and Folkers, uh, you know, where can they find that? But, but for right now, if anybody on the Zoom, uh, type in a, a chat and we'll make sure we ask Anthony. Uh, I reached out to some of my connections and, and let them know that uh, obviously we're having this conversation today. And, Great. Um, you know, uh, Roxanne uh, down in Dallas, she said to say hello. Um, she's, uh, she's, better, Roxanne. she's doing an amazing job. She's uh, got a beautiful property. She's marketing for Jason Witten uh, yep. down there. And, um, and then uh, somebody from Cabo uh, said to say hello. And so we have you know, a lot of viewership from all over, but go ahead and chime your, uh, your chat and your question in the chat box for Anthony. I'd be glad to uh, ask him while we're on. But um, selling digitally, I mean, you, know, you and I talked about earlier in this uh, episode a little bit about the new norm, right? So selling digitally, uh, do you feel like the virtual walkthroughs, the FaceTimes, it's going to be, of course, probably second, third, fourth quarter still in 2020, but 2021 and beyond. Is that going to be more normal than the, the traditional maybe open house as well as, you know, just photos, still photos? Um, I, I'm not sure if it'll be normal, uh, but I think it will certainly be more prevalent. The, the reality is, as I said earlier, people have kind of gotten used to a few of these pieces and uh, of technology and, and what it can do for them where maybe they didn't know that it would feel this way or that they could see things or they could interact in the way they're acting, interacting. So I expect that we will use it uh, like a lot of technology to, to reduce some friction, to, to make things easier for our clients. Ultimately, I still think that most clients you know, prefer the opportunity to eventually walk into a property and see it and, and, and smell it and touch it and, and, uh, and see what the neighborhood feels like and look at the sky and say, this is where I want, uh, want to call home or, or this is a property that I, that I want to own. But I do think we will use it more than we do uh, than we have. Um, maybe not as much as we are right now today, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, as at, at, at Angle and Folkers, you know, we started uh, our whole 3D project uh, back in 2016. Uh, so we've we've been a big believer that 3D is is very important. Uh, we've uh, been on the the G Suite for our entire network globally. Uh, you know, we didn't have to figure out whether or not we want to use Zoom or Google or or this or that. Uh, we, we've, we've been doing this, uh, you know, our entire headquarters team uh, has operated remotely for, well, since we started. So in the, in the Americas, so uh, we're already there. A lot of our advisors were already there, but uh, which I think gave us a nice head start, but no, I'm, I'm no doubt about it. This will become part of the way we do business. And I think it is the convenience. If I don't have to walk into 20 homes, uh, but I can narrow it down using technology to just the three that I ultimately want to visit, that's going to happen. And I think if you're marketing a luxury property or any property for that matter, if you're not thinking that way, uh, your sellers probably are or will be, and you're going to lose listings that you might get if you don't take advantage of the technology that your brand offers. That's a, that's a great point. Um, all right, any suggestions for those that are still maybe struggling working from home, um, you know, best practices, uh, you know, maybe some of your, your um, your advisors that, that uh, you know, you're talking to. Any recommendations, Anthony? 
it it uh, it's it's cliche. It's the uh, it's definitely the you know the uh, uh, um, uh, the serenity prayer comes to my mind quite often. You know, the idea is right now you should focus on the things that you can control, and and uh, and let go of the things that you can't. If you need to be aware, then be aware, but just let go of that and and know the difference between the the two. Uh, you know, there's no doubt that all of us that are going through this at whatever level are probably experiencing some sort of anxiety, some sort of, uh, 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 well, I think anxiety probably sums it up. And, uh, and just know that that's normal. It's been, for me, very helpful to talk to other people in all walks of, of, of lives in all parts of the world and realize that they're dealing with the exact same emotional uh, issues, the exact same concerns. Uh, uh, that I was. And then I think I've also done the same thing with our network and their, my network, our network for me. So I think just keep knowing the fact, focus on the things that you can do, let go of the things that you can't be as aware as you need to be and no more. Certainly do not sit and watch, you know, Fox News or CNN or whatever it is all day long. They're repeating the same story and it's not the story that you need to be hearing. Know that only the facts that you need to know and then focus on uh, doing that. And, and then I think the next step of that would be you know, find some way to take advantage of it. Uh, I took advantage of it by eating horribly for about six weeks, put on my COVID 10 pounds, and now I'm trying to figure out how to lose my COVID 10 pounds. Uh, but that was still, for me, that was nice to go back and eat a lot of the comfort foods and the things I had. But uh, you know, find ways to take care of yourself and, and develop yourself so you're uh, even stronger when you come out of this. Because I do believe that we will all be stronger in some way when we come out of it. That's a great perspective. Uh, very refreshing to hear, but I, I really appreciate that. Um, any questions, type them in, uh, and I'm, I'm looking for any chats. I don't see any right now, but uh, a couple things that I want to let everybody watching this or watching the replay again every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, same time, same place, Luxury Lunch and Learn. Um, next week, uh, we have uh, Kathleen Black. She coaches teams. She's out of Canada. She does a great job. She contributes to Inman. Um, we have Thad Wong, CEO of uh, At Properties in Chicago. And uh, we have uh, Stefan Swinepool lined up and a few others. So we're pretty much booked for the whole month of June, all our slots for Luxury Lunch and Learn. Great, yeah, we're turning this yeah. into July already. Um, uh, we, we're, we're filling slots. So uh, feedback's been really uh, positive. So if you th that are watching this have any suggestions or a topic or a recommendation of who we should have on, we're all ears um, and uh, really appreciate what everyone's doing. And we're happy to announce we're doing our first global online luxury uh, designation transit. You were talking about specialist, Anthony, earlier. Uh, our designation is called luxury listing specials. It's going to be in four and a half weeks. It's online. We're going to have a bonus day. We'll get more information out on that, but it's the URL for that. It's going to be uh, luxury designation, luxurydesignation.com. And uh, we're building out the site. It'll be live on Monday or Tuesday of next week. Excited about that. Looking for any chats real quick. Any questions for anybody? For Anthony, you have the CEO on. I mean, look at the backdrop. I mean, he screams luxury, doesn't he? It looks like we must have covered it all. We must have answered all the questions. You, you did a, you did an amazing job. Very uh, very thorough. I, I really appreciate your time and um, you're always you're a gentleman. You're always uh, taking time to raise the bar. I appreciate it. Your company's doing some great things. I've been very impressed. And if anybody wants to find out more information on your company, to, to, where, where should they go? They can go to evrealestate.com or they can reach out to me. Uh, I'm at Anthony Hitt, uh, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y-H-I-T-T -T on uh, Instagram and Twitter and, and all of the above. Or, of course, they can always email me. It's just Anthony.Hitt, H-I-T-T, at EV Real Estate. And I'd be happy to respond and answer any questions I can about our brand, about what we're doing, uh, or anything else I can possibly be of service. Well, thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your Friday. Everybody enjoy your, your uh, Memorial Day weekend, a three-day weekend isn't going to have the same meeting now that it used to have, uh, but still enjoy it. Appreciate your time today, Anthony. Michael, thanks again for inviting me. Great conversation. Thanks for all you do for our industry. All right, thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the technology issues too. Take care. All right. You too. Bye-bye.